Hi, Mark here at 911 Rapid Response and Vengeance Apparatus. We have a 2019 Ford F450 here sitting behind me for our great friends at Gilbertsville Fire Department. Um, they're going to use this unit as a traffic unit. Today we're going to go over some of those functions and uh, exactly what we did to this uh, truck. So this came in as a, co a commercial chassis to us, so this had nothing on the back when it came in. Uh, we did pre-order it with the aluminum wheels, made a little, dress it up a little bit nicer. And uh, we did some things on the front here we're going to explain to you now. So we have a chrome a bug guard across the front and we took their de decal at the front of it. Kind of makes it blend in really nice with the chrome grill. We have some ion uh, V series here in the front. So what that does is without having any type of push bar or anything on, gives us actually some added intersection power because these lights are in the V section. So it gives you front power out the front, then it also gives you side. Right now, the vehicle has, would be in the slider three position, which means it would be the traveling down the road position. And I also have the vehicle right now with the parking brake set in neutral, so you can see that it actually activates the white flash. When you would put this vehicle into park, it's gonna turn off the white flash. So I wanted to make sure I was able to show you that here in the video. So we have a set of headlight flashers in um, for the lower white flashing on, on this. As we move around to the side, we have a, another V-Series, the 500 V-Series right here in the side front fender. Um, these are a little interesting to put on. Uh, what we do is, is we actually use rib nuts in there to put on. So we don't have to get nuts on the backside if this light ever needs to be uh, under replacement, you know, 10 years down the road or something like that. Real easy for the customer to do it. Um, rib nuts are actually uh, basically like a pre-insert nut that goes into the metal itself. So there's no nuts or nothing on the backside because this is too thin to actually do any type of uh, tapping on it. So we use rib nuts on a lot of occasions like this. And where we don't use rib nuts, we have to use bolt and nut where no self-tapping is allowed on any of our installs. This vehicle is controlled by wheel and carbide. And what wheel and carbide does is we take every light in the vehicle, we set it to steady burn, and we actually flash the outputs on the wheel and controller itself, which is really unique. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to have full control over every light in the vehicle. Synchronization. We are very big with synchronization here at Vengeant Apparatus and Rapid Response. Synchronization is just much more than look. It's much more than the parade look to make it look nice. It's about safety, actually. Safety with uh, synchronization lights, not all your lights are coming on at one time, not all your lights are going off at one time. That split second, someone sees your apparatus with all your lights in the off position is the moment they look at your truck when you're going through an intersection, which is not good. So synchronization of lights is actually very important. Top of the vehicle, we have a Whelan Liberty light bar. Uh, it is fully loaded. It has the uh, full uh, duo white, uh, red white modules. Right now you see there's some white modules flashing there. When we go down in the slider switch, it'll just change to solid red. So real simple. And in the center, there is a pre-emption device, which is the LED infrared emitter to change the traffic lights. As we go over the vehicle, you're gonna see all the graphics. All the graphics are done 100% in-house. They're done from our market graphics division, which is uh, our own staffing. We don't sub any of that, in, that stuff out, which is really nice. It gives that personal touch, and it gives that customer uh, one point of contact during the whole build process of the vehicle. We don't have to contact many different people to, to build a truck like this. You contact Rapid Response and Vengeant as a whole, and we build you a truck. Running boards. The running boards were built actually right here at Vengeant, so uh, running boards are customer dependent. Everyone can be built different. This one here has some grip strut in it actually, so uh, those rainy and uh, maybe icy winter days, um, it's very safe to step in the vehicle and step out of the vehicle. Now we're going to get to the module itself. So the module itself is um, our custom built module. We built it 100% right here at uh, Vengeant Apparatus. And we're using an extrusion corner. So we're not using a foreign body. We're using a, an, a, an extrusion corner that we physically designed here in-house. And we actually have a mill make the corner for us. So that's one continued piece around. And then our sheets of aluminum come into the corner in an inset, and we weld that inset grind that inset down, great penetration on the, on the, uh, the welds, and it gives a really extremely strong corner, along with a strong uh, surface tension the whole way across the flat sheet of material itself. The, the body itself, underneath everything you see, which is extremely important, is what we call cage-style construction. And cage-style construction is two by three box tubing, quarter-inch wall, so you can physically build the cage construction of this vehicle 
put it on the back of the truck and drive it down the road and it's not going to bend, it's not going to move, it's going to hold up. Uh, that's a really unique thing. A lot, of, a lot of bodies get their integrity and strength from the walls, the inner walls and the outer walls that you put on, on, on the, the body itself. Ours isn't the case. So um, we're already meeting that strength compound by just using our cage style construction. So it's a very important uh, uh, piece of uh, um, information that, that we do here. This unit has ROM roll-up doors on it. We can use different roll-up doors. ROM is one of our, our preferences. They make a, a fantastic roll-up door. We have some scene lights on the side from FireTech. We have wheel and M7 series. We have a set of Pioneer pole lights in the front. That's really nice when you're pulling up to a scene. You want to light the scene up, you can push a button, turn on the scene lights. Again, that's all controlled through the wheel and carbide. We also have some other buttons configured that you can push a button and it turns all the scene lights on with one button turn scene lights on with reverse lights and so forth you can do as well. Same way with opening up the driver's door, passenger door, we can turn on scene lights automatically because what we're doing is we're reading it through the OBD2 sensor of the truck and we're picking up the scent signals. So when we do our wiring in this vehicle, the only thing we're doing is going to the battery. We're not tapping in, cutting into body control harnesses or anything else like that. We're physically plugging into the OBD2, reading the outputs out of that, transferring that into the wheel and carbide system, doing programming in the wheel and carbide system of telling it what for outputs to run, and there you have it. So we'll go to the, around the back of the vehicle here. We have some chevrons on the back, custom rear bumper as well. Another rollout door here in the back, little hidden compartment down here in the bottom. This is just some added space. So generally what we'll do is we try to make access of all space so this is just another compartment to utilize to throw maybe uh, you know stuff you might not use all the time maybe safety change or something to that aspect that you might need in the vehicle Again, this rear bumper has the uh, the grip strut in it as well on the top we have a Trafcon arrow board so this vehicle is specifically designated for traffic control so push of a button inside the cab that Trafcon board will flip up you have many different variations of arrows that you can do and it also has the pulse mode in it, which throws a quick flash of white light first and then follows immediately behind the amber um, directly after. Warning lights in the back, we have the wheel and M9s, which actually have the scene lights across the bottom. So these are a scene light, warning light combination. That's, that scene light gives a nice downward angle. So if you're standing back here, it's not directly in your eyes blinding you, but it gives you a nice area across the back to walk around. It gives you a safe uh, area for oncoming traffic to also see you because it's not blinding oncoming traffic, which is very important as well. And then we have some uh, other M6 lights here and the bezels, which are built into warning lights with the brake tail turns and reverse lights. All the lights are controlled with a photo cell located in the light bar, going back to the wheel and carbide system. So when the sun goes down and it gets dark outside, the light bar will automatically have a photo cell, will automatically send a signal to the wheel and carbide box. The carbide box will say, hey, it's dark outside. We're going to automatically dim all your lights. Instead of giving a button to push, which often gets forgotten on, uh, on emergency situations, this will automatically do it for you. Now, a lot of people will say, why dim the lights? You know, we want everything to be as bright as possible. Not necessarily. There's a lot of studies out there that doesn't show that. There's a lot of studies out there that say um, a lot of drunk drivers especially are attracted to high, bright, fast flashing lights. So we can control that and change that automatically for the customer so the customer doesn't have to worry about that. That's just all in programming. Okay, now we're at the side here. We're gonna show you our, this front compartment. If you notice, this front compartment's huge. Again, this comes from our cage style construction allows us to make our front compartments very large in these instances because we don't lose any structural strength by doing it. So this has an unseen solution slide out tray. Real nice slide out tray, has a nice handle here, but it's transverse. So this can actually slide out in both directions. It can slide either way. So all I gotta do is just grab a hold of it and pull it out and it will have lock de detents that you can lock it out at different spots. That's your outward on this side, and then you can do the same on the other side. So new cones or whatever it may be. We also have uh, some turtle tile plastics laying in the bottom of this. Um, so if anything gets wet, again, it, uh, you don't have to worry about anything getting moldy underneath. So if we slide this back in, the tent will go, we'll hold it back. 
The inner walls are coated with what we call PPC coating. Our great friends up near Hershey do this for us. This is just the gray liner. A lot of times we'll do gray or we'll do black, either or. But one nice thing with this material is it actually has a UV type protective material on it. So there's a lot of your bed liner companies, when they coat things, when that material gets dirty, it's really hard to get it clean again. It stays really dirty. It impregnates the dirt almost into it. You'll see a lot of that application used like in the back of pickup trucks and things of that nature. Well, this material is just a little bit different. Number one, it works really well if it is outside because it's UV protectant, but it also keeps it looking like new almost all the time. So when it gets dirty, you can wash it clean. That's what it looks like after you wash it, which is really nice. Below here, you'll see a little bit of a false wall. This false wall behind that is our electronics panel. We're not really using simple switching, but we're not really using multiplexing. So it's the best of both worlds, we call it, for people that like both. It's really using just the wheel and carbide system with a really nice volt link, um, which is one of our systems, uh, electronics box, which just has three built-in timers in it, a bunch of fuses with automatic LED diag ports in it, and it's real simple to use it. Um, something needs to be looked at, real simple, fuse pull out, fuse put in, and we also give a wiring diagram with that as well when we build our vehicles. Every one of our compartments has a vent. So there's a vent up top here, there's some vents in the bottom. Everything has a vent. All those vents are pre-cut out with our water jet. So they're not a whole cut out that we then um, just put a grate over top of it, right? This gives a much nicer, cleaner look, much more professional look by doing it, and doesn't cost the customer any more money doing it. Just a little attention to detail is how we look at it. All our compartments are lined with Unistrut. So as you can see here, these have Unistrut in them. So do all the other compartments, like this one here. It says Unistrut in it as well. And that's for this application, um, like this tray. that gives us adjustable trays in here. Uh, it's really nice because if you ever want to add anything later, want to add any other type of mounting solutions, all the compartments have Unistrut. So it works real well in that application. You've got a wheel chalk holder down there, onboard Kuzma charger. Your gas is here. If this was gas and diesel, you'd have a, a, a some type of a death fluid here we put in the vehicle as well to fill it. This system, this vehicle also has an airbag system on the back. So knowing what this is going to be used for with the Trafcom board and loaded with cones on the tail end of this, the vehicle can handle it and it can handle it safely. However, you'll get some sag no matter what, right? So what we do is, is we put an, an, an air lift system on it, an airbag system on it, and that system actually has an, in, an onboard compressor system, and that's actually controlled right here. So you can push the up button to put more in the, air in the system, and you can push the down button to take air out. So right now we have about 20 pounds in it. You always want to run some type of poundage in the airbags, but uh, it's real, real simple to increase and decrease that uh, efficiency depending on the load in the back of the vehicle. I'll show you the back roll-up compartment here as well, since we're here. Now this has some mounting solutions on it as well. We kind of went over it with the customer, asked them what they're looking to do. They want to handle roll-up signs, they want to handle uh, uh, other traffic stuff, other signs that they have. So this meets their needs. So we went out with them and said, okay, what do you need? How are you going to build it? You know, what are you going to do? Uh, so they're going to put some cones here, some other cones over here, some sign stands here, and then some roll-up stuff up here in this top tray. Along, inside, if you see, we're getting full maximum capacity. We're now using that Unistrut so they can put stuff up top on the side shelving as well. So it gives a little bit of extra storage and full storage out of the back of this vehicle. Now this may seem a little high here, but that is because just because we have the vehicle parked here on a little bit of a hill, um, normally it is definitely lower. Again, this is an unseen solution slide out tray as well, and it does have detents at different locations, so you don't have to pull it out the whole way, but you can if you want to. Real simple, and roll it back down. Now we're gonna go inside the vehicle, and we're gonna just go over the console, how we fabricated the console, and the uh, other uh, options that are in there. Okay, now we're inside the vehicle. We're gonna go some, over some things that we've done in here. So the console uh, we physically make, you can make these out of metal, 
or wood. This one's actually made out of a maple wood, and then it's coated with a bed liner type material. So it's extremely rugged, but it lets us uh, get a little bit more personal um, with the console by doing it this way. We can actually fill everything in nice with a, con with a, a Bondo type filler. It gives a very nice, smooth, sleek finish the whole way across it. It makes it very rigid as well. The very first thing up top here is our inverter. So this vehicle has a Kuzma plug in the side with a Xantrax inverter. And what that does is when the vehicle is plugged into the shoreline, the 110 outlets will have power, power to them. However, when you unplug that, that ve the vehicle from the, uh, from the department and pull out, when you pull out and start the vehicle, you can also turn the inverter back on and give 110, outlet, 110 power to those outlets again. So your outlets can always have power on this vehicle. The red light there is a door jar light. The USB port there is an extended USB port from the dash. We actually just extend it with an extension cable, which is nice, so you can still use the, uh, the USB function of, of the Ford itself. And we come down to the controller, real simple. We have a slider switch one, um, a, a setup of lighting. Slider switch two adds more, and then slider switch three adds the white flash, along with your siren tones, scene lights, both sides, fronts, and rears, and you can turn on the Pioneer lights, turn the preemption device off if you really want to. And you can manually hit it to low power, but remember, we do have it set that you can do it automatically. And you can do some amber, uh, an amber button there as well. We have the customer supplied radio we put in for them, um, which is a Motorola radio. And then as you go to the back here, we have a, the Trafcon arrow board, which is just the power button up and down, and then your functions of which, does, which way that you want it to operate. We end up in the back with a set of cup holders, and a custom fabricated um, run book holder to hook, put uh, some three ring binders. So like what you see, want to learn more about us? No problem, give us a call. 717-473-3843. We'd be happy to help you out. Remember, everything we build here at Rapid Response Invention is 100% custom. If you want this body three and a half inches taller, you want this compartment a little bit narrower, you want it higher, it's not a problem. Um, we can go over that with you. We'll sit down with you. We'll go over what your, your wants and needs are. We'll write a list down. We make the process very simple. We take care of sourcing the chassis. We take care of getting everything completed that all you have to do as a customer is tell us what your wants or needs are. We'll go over everything with you. We'll give you a CAD drawing of the truck. We'll approve it and we'll move forward from there and we'll build your truck for you. So this is just another exciting project that we were able to do for our friends at Gilbertsville. We enjoy um, working with every customer. Gilbertsville, fire department, volunteer guys that we worked with, uh, we appreciate your business. You're keeping a family owned company um, in business. We have about 40 some employees right now. We're striving forward and uh, folks like you um, give us that uh, American success. Thank you again and uh, have a great day.